Tobias Harris returns to the Detroit Pistons on a two-year, $56 million deal. We'll talk about that and a whole lot more on today's episode of Pistons Into Lane. Sky's a jam. Dynamite dunk and the crowd loves it. Welcome back to Peace and Intellect. I'm your host, Jack Kelly. You can follow me on Twitter at Jack underscore Kelly underscore three on three. You can also follow us over on Instagram at Pistons underscore intellect. And if you're feeling so kind, please hit that subscribe button. As I mentioned off the top, Tobias Harris is officially a Detroit Piston once again uh, with Woj reporting much earlier this morning for me that the former Piston, Tobias Harris, is returning to Detroit on a two-year, $56 million deal. That deal has no team options or player options on the second year. It's just purely $28 million uh, for each of the next two seasons. And I must admit, when I woke up this morning, I was extremely happy to see this for a number of reasons. Uh, First of all, just to see the Pistons (laughs) land somewhat of a major player in a free agency class just felt nice feels like for the past few years the pistons uh, it may mainly just last year but in general the pistons just have missed out um and then after day one of the pistons not signing anyone it kind of felt like ah oh, shit like are we really going back down that path again where uh we're gonna just run it back with the young guys and some over the hill veterans and i know tobias isn't necessarily in his prime but I am going to detail why I think this is a good deal and why I'm happy about it. But just from a sense of, for us as a fan base, I think the moves Langdon has made so far and the way he's spoken in press conferences has been really positive and refreshing and got us all excited. I think the coaching hire of JB Bickerstaff after now having like 24 hours to think about it, I think the fan base as a whole is okay and pretty positive with that hiring. So, um, to now land a free agent, uh, and I don't want to say of Tobias's magnitude because, look, this isn't a max player. This isn't a guy that's going to turn the team around, the franchise around, but I think it's it's significant and it continues the positive trend uh, with Langdon in charge and the new front office that, uh, you know, they can go out and get players. They, he did make a trade for um, Tim Hardaway Jr. Uh, he has brought in shooting, like he said. Uh, he has brought in two low turnover guys in Tobias Harris and uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. Um, you know, he spoke about shooting, rim protection, and turnovers. And so far, the players he's brought in address two of those things. Now, the big move left, I feel like, is finding someone, whether it's a backup big or someone remaining for agency that can protect the rim or it's a trade maybe. Um, but, you know, he's from what he said, he is doing so far. So um, from what uh, Langdon said in his press conference, he's doing those things. So it's refreshing. It's nice to see them get a free agent. And as well, like just Harris has been linked to the Pistons for so long. And often when you hear that someone's linked to the Pistons or linked to any team, um, but but particularly ones like the Pistons that are kind of afterthoughts, um, normally they don't get that guy. So um, Tobias has been linked to Detroit for, for a while, but for in, in as it pertains to this season, like ever since the trade deadline, he's been a name linked with the Pistons. And so I was just really happy to see them sign Tobias Harris, sign him at that deal. I think I had pretty much mentioned he was, I think on yesterday's episode, and I might have tweeted it out on the eve of friends that he was kind of the number one guy I wanted the Pistons to get out of deal between two years, 50 to 55 million. So they've done that. I'm happy with that. Uh, and I know some fans aren't happy with it, but I, w- I just want to address one thing. The only thing that, and I normally don't let this stuff get to me. I normally ignore it, but kind of the, it's, it's, it's not so much the Pistons fans. It's more the NBA fans that are clowning Detroit for signing Harris just annoys me. Cause it's like, they would, like when people just tweet out stuff about the playoffs, it's like, cool. Pistons aren't making the playoffs. The so Pistons make the playoffs in two years. In the two years that Tobias Harris is contracted here, they'll be ahead of schedule. And I know that might sound stupid because they're so far behind schedule, but this the schedule is kind of reset with Langdon in charge, whether you want to admit it or not. The clock is reset, and 
if they get to the playoffs within two years and Tobias Harris on the roster, then this deal is going to look amazing. I can guarantee you that. So uh, I don't care that Tobias Harris scored zero points in game seven against the Knicks or game six. I couldn't care less because this kind of ties into who Tobias is, the production he brings, and just the consistency. Uh, he's going to bring on a night-to-night basis. And um, just some numbers, Tobias Harris – these are Tobias Harris's numbers over the last five seasons with Philadelphia. So this is averages across five seasons. So think about how many games that is. He's played 70 or more games in four of those five seasons. And the only season he played less than 70 games, he was in like the mid sixties. So he plays pretty much every other night. Um, and then on top of that, every other night, he's giving you 18 points, seven rebounds, three assists, 50% shooting from the field. 37% from three-point line, 86% from the free throw line, and not to mention only one and a half turnovers to 3.1 assists. Not amazing. It's not Chris Paul, but for a guy that's going to be this team's first or second scorer, depending on uh, – look, he's probably going to be the second scorer behind Keg, but for a guy that's going to be the secondary option, unless a crazy trade happens, one and a half turnovers is pretty good. Like, that's actually – really good for a guy that's going to have the ball in his hands. Maybe it goes up a tick because he's going to be asked to do a little bit more, but, uh, you know, on top of all of that as well, he's a career, this is career. So Tobias Harris has been in the league for like 12 seasons, I think. He's a career 39% three-point shooter from the corners. So when you talk about spacing the floor for Kay Cunningham, you can't provide much better spacing than if you have a dead-eye corner three-point shooter in the corner pulling defenders away. So I'm just envisioning Tim Hardaway Jr. in one corner, Tobias Harris in the other corner, just on specific sets, not the whole game. And both their men are going to have to stay on them. So those are two proven shooters from the corner. And Tim Hardaway Jr. I think is a more proven shooter overall, like off the dribble and that kind of thing. But both guys are good to great shooters. And um, Tobias, more so than Hardaway, is just consistent. So I think... For me, that's why Tobias, after I saw the way the Pistons drafted, that's why Tobias became a priority for me because uh, like Najee Marshall, and I spoke about it yesterday, but just don't believe the shooting he's done it for long enough. Um, Tobias Harris has concerns defensive end, don't get me wrong, but I just think having a secondary option like that alongside Cade, similar to what Jeremy Grant was, um, but I would say Tobias is... His efficiency is on par. I think Jeremy Grant's probably the bit better player at this stage of the career, but the contract and that kind of thing kind of balances out. But getting Cade, um, like I would say, I'm, I'm bouncing all over the place here, apologies, but I would say the best stretch of Cade Cunningham Pistons basketball was post All-Star break in his rookie season. And that was when he was playing with Jeremy Grant, Sadiq Bay, Corey Joseph, and Isaiah Stewart. And that lineup doesn't sound like much, but he had a secondary ball handler and a playmaker in Corey Joseph who could knock down open threes. He had Sadiq Bay, who was inconsistent, but could, you know, he would draw defenders and knock down open threes. Um, Jeremy Grant was kind of the secondary creator. And then he had Isaiah Stewart. And those two at the time had kind of figured out this pick and roll highway screen game that really worked. And then he had Marvin Bagley as well as a role man. So that was the best stretch of basketball we've seen. Cade have so now to get a real secondary creator alongside him in Tobias who has size and can get into the paint a little bit unlike Bogdanovich um, and isn't going to give up as much defensively as Bogdanovich I think is huge and is going to take the pressure off Cade tremendously and allow him to play not just such heavy pick and roll not ISO but just have all the pressure on him every possess every possession to make stuff happen. He's going to have help with Tobias Harris, and hopefully the Pistons can find someone else. But um, I just think it's a huge tick this signing, and I um, I don't think this is going to. This doesn't mean the Pistons are making the plan, not at all. But I think this signing, as well as potentially some of the other stuff that could happen, um, is huge. So, and finally, the last thing on Tobias is the lineup flexibility he gives you. Um, yes, he's not the best defender at the four. I would still have concerns defensively if opening night Tobias is at the four, Jalen Duran's at the five. But on the offense, you can play Tobias 
like you can with Hardaway Jr. alongside Asar Thompson or Ron Holland um, or Jalen Duran offense because he can space the floor. And unlike Stewart, when he plays the four, yes, Stu can op- knock down catch and shoot threes, but the second the defense is closed out to him, Stu just got lost. He just he couldn't put it on the deck consistently. He can't make passing reads on the move, attacking up closeouts. Tobias Harris can do that with ease. So uh, I think this is a huge signing. I think Pistons fans should be – like I know just based of what I've seen so far, and I feel like there's more moves coming, this is easily the most excited I've been for a Pistons season right now. Just the – and and I would say that cautiously because I've said that every year, but after what we witnessed last season, um, I just – this team just – like I don't agree with the people that are saying Tobias Harris and Alec uh, – and Tim Hardaway Jr. just another another um, version of Boyan Bogdanovich and Alec Burks. Like they're not. They're both, um, you know, Tim Hardaway Jr. struggled in the playoffs and he can be consistent, but he's a much better off-ball shooter than Alec Burks. Alec Burks can be a little bit more on the ball, but, um, you know, Tobias Harris, in my opinion, is just on another level to any of those guys. So Bogdanovich included, like, Boyan really struggled with the Knicks, and I don't think we realized it at the time, but I know a certain fair amount of fans did, don't get me wrong, but at least speaking for myself, I probably didn't realize how far past his kind of prime he was last season until I saw him on that Knicks team. That really, yeah, cemented it for me that, wow, I was really, started last season, I really thought he was going to help this team. So um, I think Tobias is just another level compared to Boyan, and he's a lot younger, even by a few years. So big tick for me. I'd love to know how you feel, how Pistons fans are feeling. I feel like there's just a sense of, um, for the most part, a sense of relief that the Pistons signed someone and actually used this cap space to get a player that's going to help next season. But also I think people are happy to have Tobias back in Detroit. I know, I was surprised actually, a fair few people said like he was their favourite player on those Stan Van Gundy Pistons teams. Like, so... Good to have him back. Tobias as well also is doing some great stuff in the community with his brother. I saw um, they're building some form of housing um, for people in Detroit or Michigan. So, like, that's just another really cool thing. So, to have him back in the city, I think, is fantastic. So, um, let me know your thoughts on Tobias. But moving on a little bit, just a quick kind of recap of what happened today in free agency and the moves that, kind of relate back to our Pistons. So the big one, first thing this morning was Isaiah Hartenstein signed with OKC for three years, 87 million. That deal would have scared me if the Pistons signed him. I was kind of thinking like 25 million a year, absolute max for Hartenstein. That deal works for OKC and their salary structure and where they're at as a team, like that deal's fine for them. If the Pistons had assigned him for three years, 90 million or four years, 120, I would have not liked that deal. So to see that was kind of the market, I'm kind of fine missing out on him, to be honest. I think he's a great player. I think he's going to put OKC into another to another level. Um, great signing for them, but I think that's too expensive for the context of the Pistons. If the Pistons are paying him close to 30 million, like just think about it. So... That's, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Um, another couple of guys that uh, signed today that were kind of on the Pistons list or Pistons fans list was Jalen Smith signed with the Bulls for three years, $27 million. Um, You know, wouldn't have minded him as a depth backup guy. Depends what happens with Stu because he's shooting, but Jalen Smith obviously got a deal with the Bulls. Gary Harris, I know that f- fans were a little bit upset with this. He returned to the Magic two years, $14 million. Now, I know a lot of Pistons fans wanted to use that room exception on him, but, you know, Harris is injured a lot. Would have been nice to add him, don't get me wrong. But, uh, you know, I think this is kind of a classic thing where it's like, is he really going to come to Detroit for maybe – maybe he should come – maybe he would like to come to Detroit for an extra five, six minutes. Maybe that's, that's what should have happened. No one knows if the Pistons were interested, but – you know, leaving a Magic team on the rise where he's probably got a role on a winning team. Uh, you can kind of see why he's gone back there. Uh, just quickly, Del- DeLon Wright signed with the Bucks. 
Clay signed with the Mavs. Not that that was ever going to happen, but just wanted to mention that. And then this is another name a lot of Pistons fans have been leaving in the comments. Goga Bataze. <laughs> I've never said that name, but I know who he is. Um, he's a solid backup big. He went back to the Magic on three years, $25 million. So once again, around that $8 million mark, uh, good room protector. Uh, I feel like if they had assigned him, definitely either. The, if they had assigned him, especially with Tobias, I'd feel like Stu was definitely gone. So um, those were the signings for today. Uh, look, Gary Harris would have been nice, but... Um, Malik Beasley still out there um, as a, another shoot the Pistons could get. Um, but obviously, I think kind of what the Pistons, this like a lot of people have said they're missing kind of defense in the backcourt, which I agree with. But I still think the next thing they need to address the most is rim protection. And that's why when we look at some of the, the, the Pistons have around 25 million left and in cap space. And we still haven't seen... The Pistons still haven't made that trade yet where they bring on a bad contract to say or a large contract and take it off the hands of another team. They still haven't really done that. I guess you could say Hardaway was kind of, but I don't think they've, they haven't done like to put it, like they haven't taken on an Andrew Wiggins or Zach Levine type contract. And maybe they don't, but just some names of some larger contracts around the league that, could be on the move, which the Pistons could be linked to and they could fit into their cap space. Uh, some names include Andrew Wiggins, uh, Cam Johnson from the Nets, depending on which way they look to go. Um, Kyle Kuzma, I know a lot of Pistons fans love that name. This is a name I would love the Pistons to get. And that's, I don't know how possible it is, but it's Brooke Lopez. I believe he has, he's on the final year of his deal, but he's like being the perfect archetype for a spacing room protecting big. Now I'm not sure he would be as effective as an anchor in the paint without Giannis next to him. But I mean, when you talk about stretch bigs and then guys who lead the league in blocks like Brook Lopez, you know, outside of like Victor Wembanyama, he's pretty much the guy. So, um, and then Clint Capella, another name I've mentioned a ton here. DeAndre Hunter, another name I've mentioned. I, I kind of think, Someone said to me, oh, well, if the Pistons got DeAndre Hunter, do they now have too many forwards slash wings? And I said, look, that's not a bad call because they bring back Fontecchio, they have Asar, they have Ron Holland, they have Tobias. That's four guys that even if, like I've said, Holland's going to not feature a ton, you still want him getting eight to 10 minutes a night, I feel like. So that's four wings already. You had DeAndre Hunter there. Um, that's five, but... So I kind of understood the pushback, but I said, if you can get a nice first round pick to take on Hunter's three years, like 68 million from the Hawks, if they're just desperate to get off him, then I think you make it work because having too many wings is a lot better than having too many guards or too many centers. Like that's the one part of your roster that if you're going to have it overflowing and if you have those five names, they're all talented wings and they're all guys that you can ease it like you don't want to flip Asar and uh Holland yet but you can easily build those guys value up there'll be teams that would trade for those guys no matter what so uh I'm still open to the idea of Hunter um and yeah Capella and Book Lopez are the two centers like I'd be very interested in another center is Jared Allen um, someone replied to me though, when I mentioned that name, that Alan and Bicker stuff kind of aren't on the best terms. So I think Alan would be an awesome get. And if they got Alan, that would be, I can't imagine Jalen Duran would be around for much longer because he's the type of center. He's still relatively young. Um, he's the type of center you just kind of glue down, lock in as your guy for the next four to five years. So, um, I think that's a bit of a pipe dream though. I don't see them getting Jared Allen. Um. Uh, couple of other names on here. Someone threw out Harrison Barnes. Depends, like I said. A bit similar to DeAndre Hunter, but Barnes, similar thing if you got an asset, sure. But um, I know the Kings have been rumoured to be looking at Ingram, so maybe they need to get off Barnes's money. Um, but I would assume they'd just be sending it back to the Pelicans. So, But those are just some trade names to think about. Um, like I said, my favourite there is Brooke Lopez. Probably DeAndre Hunter and Clint Capella. Um, so, and then Jared Allen would be amazing, but I just don't think that's very realistic. But um, Cam Johnson would be nice as well. 
But I kind of tend to think the Nets, just because they re-signed Claxton, like I feel like the Pistons to get Cam Johnson would have to give up assets to get him. So I don't think that's a pathway to go. So, yeah, whole heap of names there, whole heap of stuff to think about. Let me know of any trade candidates you like or any of the remaining free agents you think the Pistons should go after. There's still a ton to play out here. Who knows what's going to happen with this young core the Pistons have um, because it feels like there still has to be a bit of a shake-up there. So uh, I still think we've got an interesting few days ahead of us. Um, and, yeah, uh, I don't – unless there's actual – there's a signing tomorrow, a trade, I probably won't be back. My plan is just to go back to the normal Friday show, but I assume we were going to have news between now and then. So I'm just going to cover this as best I can, jump on each night. There's – um news worth talking about so appreciate everyone sticking with me and supporting the channel um and yeah until some more breaking news or friday as always go pistons <laughs>